which tells us how. Hi. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you need to be on the branch 04 Vulcan Renderer Textured Quad. That's what we'll be doing today. In order to display a texture on screen, we need to load a file first. And so I have prepared this green cakes over here. And first I need to tell you about how we are going to use this texture in our engine. Right now it's a PNG file and PNG files are compressed. If we wanted to load this file, we would first have to decompress the pixels and then supply them to our renderer. We will be converting this file into a different format that is what is called GPU ready. That means that we can just open this file, read in the data minus some header, which tells us the width, the height, the MIP levels and all of that stuff and some data only. And we can then use the data directly in Vulkan and load them into a what is called Vulkan image. That is what we call a GPU ready format. A format that is able to be loaded directly into GPU memory and used by the renderer. So in order to convert this file, I have a little program here called textconf.exe. This is a converter for textures from Microsoft that is able to create DDS files for us. These DDS files are GPU ready. In order to use the program, we open the command line. We type in textconf. It's a, it is a command line tool. Then we type in the format of the texture. And I'll get into what that format is in a second. We type in minus F and then we specify the format, which is R8, eight bits for the red channel, green channel, eight bits, blue channel, eight bits, alpha channel, eight bits, which is 32 bits in total, underscore. And that is U norm. That's what we are going to be using. And now we specify the file, cakes PNG. Now notice the file is in 64 by 64. It, this is a multiple of two. I deliberately chose a multiple of two because then the DDS header that we have to parse is way simpler than a DDS header that has to manage sizes that are not a multiple of two. This is just for ease of use and you will get errors if you don't use a multiple of two for your texture. I'm just warning you now, I do this because I have tried this and it's easier to load. And the header that we'll be creating is, is not correct if you were to use a different size for your image. You can always use multiples of two. That is correct. That won't be any problem, but anything else will not work. Just pointing that out there. So yeah, now we have this cakes DDS file and I will open this in GIMP to show you what's going to happen. Look at the colors. Bright green, right? I'll open it to GIMP. Takes a while. Yes, I want to load MIP levels. Look how this one is darker than this one. If you put them side by side. In order to explain what's happening, we first have to understand how we as humans perceive brightness versus what we would like brightness to be. We as humans perceive brightness in a way that is described in the bottom line here. We are more susceptible to changes in dark colors, meaning that if we go from brightness 0.0 to 0.1, the difference is way more noticeable for us than what we would like it to be if we were to use this in a program, which is the top line here. The top line is basically linear and that brightness over here is how we perceive that. And so monitors correct this by applying what is called CRT gamma. Basically, they darken darker pixels down so that an increase in gamma is more of a linear nature than what our eyes actually perceive. So if we change a dark color on our monitor to be a bit brighter, it actually gets less bright than it would get if it was linear. Kind of terrible explanation, but basically, you know, it's this bottom line here. Basically, we dumb down the colors we make them darker so that we can work in a linear space. And this is what's happening with the file that we loaded in GIMP. It is darker. Now, why is this darker? Because GIMP thinks that the image is in what is called sRGB space, which is this top line here. 
this bottom curve with the gamma corrected curve if gimp loads that texture a texture that is gamma corrected it darkens the pixels down to this linear curve and therefore we can work in gimp with the texture in this linear space over here which is the dotted line but since we chose u norm and gimp thinks it is gamma corrected u norm what that means is well don't please don't touch the colors in this texture because we keep them in linear space so that we don't have to change them when loading the texture it is basically a wrong option in gimp somewhere that i don't know how to turn on or off and that's not gimp's fault but my fault for how uh, for not telling gimp how to load my texture properly but anyways what srgb does is basically the opposite of the crt gamma it corrects the gamma up so that when we load a texture which is then gamma corrected it is in linear space and we have to tell Vulkan what type of texture we are using. Vulkan is smart enough to know that if we specify that well we have a u-norm texture meaning a linear texture in the shader when we sample that texture it will not be color corrected. It will stay the colors will stay the way they are in the texture. They will not be corrected down and therefore being darker. If we tell Vulkan Using our, we, we basically created a U-norm texture. If we told Vulcan, well, this texture is an sRGB, a gamma corrected texture, Vulcan would darken our texture just like it happens in GIMP. You know, th this is something that could happen uh, if you are not careful. But we will, we will take, take care of that. And basically, why we are doing this is so that we basically make the texture lighter so that. And there's an example down here. Darker areas are perceived better and we can actually see some details in these darker areas. Look on the right picture here. This is gamma correction. Uh, you can see some detail in those shadows while on the left side you can't. That's what is more or less important in 3D but we will not worry about that and therefore we use U-norm here. But I just wanted to point that out that you will most likely want sRGB and that is also what we have specified as our render target. Remember the surface and frame buffers? We basically specified the sRGB there and Vulkan will handle that for us. If we use a U-norm texture, Vulkan will do the conversion to the correct color space for us. We just have to tell Vulcan that this texture that we are loading is in the this color space and therefore Vulcan will apply or not apply any gamma correction. And in the shader, I just wanted to point that out really quick, we will always be working in this linear space, right? So we will have this value and not this value or maybe from this value, not this value, right? We will always have this linear space. If we make something twice as bright, it will be twice as bright. If we, we will perceive something twice as bright if we change the brightness times two in linear space. Uh, these curves are just something that happens in the background. So yeah, we have this DDS file here and I want to create a folder in the renderer assets. I guess I already have it. I want to, I wonder why. I guess I already have it though. So basically in assets textures, I put this file and I will supply this file in a link down in the description so that you can download it and use it as well. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is load this file. Remember, it is GPU ready. So in VK init, we do create image. We need to create an image in Vulkan. We could first load the file real quick. Char data is platform read file. There would be assets, textures, cakes.dds. File size, pass that in as pointer. So it gets read outside and then we do un32t file size right that's loading the file and i noticed we have to change the interface i like to specify un32t instead of int and so i will quickly change platform read file to take in a un32t like so right un32t now that will throw in uh, a bunch of errors we have to change those existing codes to UN32T and we'll clean up all of this stuff later of course okay so we have the file and now uh, what I will do is I will create a header 
that we can then use to cast this pointer to so we have an easier time loading the file. Basically, we have been loading a DDS file. That DDS file has a header. And we call that struct DDS header. Header, like so, right? I will put a link to this DDS header of Microsoft down in the description. Basically, that is the header. I copy all of those and paste them. And every G word is basically a UN32T. So I'll going, I'm going to replace those with UN32T. And actually, I do not like the W, GW. So I'll be removing that as well. I find that not useful. It's basically a prefix saying D word. Then we need the DDS pixel format. Struct DDS, DDS pixel format. Paste those in here as well. And then we change every G word with UN32T. We are not going to be using the pixel format. We don't care. We just have to specify it because of the the size of the header. That's very important. And we, I guess we are not using that, but a DDS pixel format. Uh, you have to type that correctly. Not like me. It is DDS in big. Okay, there's one more thing that we need, which is a magic number. But we will be creating that in the next structure, which is a struct DDS file. And that's all we need. We need a char array magic number, which is four characters. Then we get the DDS header. That's the header. And then what I like to do is a little trick. Char data begin. This char will be the first binary data in the file. And we can then use the address plus the size in the header with times height times four, which I'll explain in a second, second to know that this file is, that's the data of the file. And I forgot one thing in the text conf. Uh, we also have to specify, I, I forgot that, minus M1. What this does is, and we have to specify that before the minus F. What this does is it creates one MIP level. Basically, a MIP level is a dumped down version, a smaller version of your texture. When you have a very a texture that is very far away, an object using the texture. And then you can, then the, the render will use different MIP levels based on how far the texture is away from the camera. Since we will be creating a 2D game, we do not need MIP levels, but in 3D they are very important to save on performance. Basically, it's a smaller version of your texture, making it look, uh, making textures look good even when they're far away. So yeah, we are going to do that, but I'll also specify minus Y to overwrite the existing file as well. Boom. And basically the file that you'll get is this uh, Cakes DDS file. This has one MIP level, right? So you don't have to worry about that. I just wanted to add it because by default, the text conf creates MIP levels that you might not need. Okay, so we have this DDS file right here, the structure, right? And what we can do now is very nice. We do, well, we cast this to a DDS file pointer, right? Like this. And then instead of chart pointer, we have a DDS file pointer that is called data. And we can then use that data and access the properties of the header. Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and create the image. And we will be extracting, I guess we'll, uh, we'll extract those now. We take all of these structures, cut them out, go into source, and we create a new file called ddsstructs.h. And we basically, at least, well, we have to do a pragma once, and we paste those in here. I guess we also have to include defines.h. And then in the renderer, we include that file, ddsstructs.h. And so back here, down in the image, create image, it is a lot easier to read for us. So we have loaded the data correctly, assuming we have that, right? And I'll put a little to do in here, assertions. Basically, we don't know if the data is correct that we have, and we would like to have some assertions telling us that the data is correct or not, right? But we'll skip this for now, just to get the image quickly on screen. So yeah, what do we do in Vulkan? Well, we need to VK create image. And I hate when the IntelliSense doesn't show me the correct one. This one, VK create image. VK context, takes in a device, like always. Then it image info, image info, pointer, an allocator zero and the pointer to the image. And I guess I call this VK context image for now. We will be extracting that for sure. That is something that we create a lot. But for now, we just have one in our VK context. 
And I guess I will put another to-do in here as well. To-do will be app, app rec vk image, image like so. Go back down here. And then we create the info. vk image create info. Image info. Initialize that to zero. And you know what's going to happen. Image info dot s type is vk structure type image create info. Thank you. Okay, so I briefly I briefly touched on MIP levels. Image info dot MIP levels would be one. Image info dot array layers would be one. Array layers basically mean we have the same size of image, but more than one. That is b uh, commonly used in cube maps, but we have one array layer. We just have one image. Image info dot. The format is something that we talked about. That is VK format. R8, 8 bits per pixel, G8, B8, A8, this one, Unorm. That's what we specified in TextConf. That's very important. Otherwise, our texture will be darker. Image info dot. We need an extent. That extent, we can uh, look at this real quick. If IntelliSense decides to work, it's an extent 3D. And I like to specify it like this. It's basically, the data header dot width, data header dot height and one the depth of one image info dot we specify the samples next it basically says what is the sample count and that is vk sample count one bit we sample one time we do not do any multi sampling or anything we will have a pixelated texture on screen and so we want to sample one time we don't want to average anything out image info dot the next thing is the usage, which would be VK image. What are we going to use the image for? Usage. And this image will be the destination of a transfer, transfer of data, meaning that we will be transferring data to this image, which is correct. The image will be on the GPU. We have the data on the CPU. We need to transfer that data from CPU to GPU memory. But that is not all. We also need a VK image usage sample bit basically saying that we are going to sample from this image and that means and i guess that's a good time to open the shader the frag basically over here in the shader currently we only have the fragment color if this finally decides to let me freaking walk in in here we have to specify a layout set is zero binding zero as well and then uniform sampler 2d like so and we have to give it a name i call this sprite we can't use texture because what we have to do now is since we have this in our shader basically we sample from the sprite in the shader the fragment color is no longer the white color but we are going to texture that's a call from the sprite with what is called uvs right so we have to get the uvs in here somehow UVs are basically the sample points, and these sample points are interpolated. Let's just take this as an example real quick. Top left, the sample point top left is 0, 0, and the sample point bottom right is 1, 1. So, and you could think of these four edges, corners, to be the vertex positions, right? We have a triangle currently, so the bottom left, top in the middle, bottom right, right? We will have two triangles, the top left, top right, bottom left, and then the same thing uh, for the bottom. So we will have six vertices and we have to specify these UVs and in between they will be interpolated by the shader. The, the shader will do that for us. But we have to specify the UVs for every vertex and we'll do that in the vertex shader. I'll show you. So assuming we have the UVs, basically that is... And what I like to do is I like to put in over out. So layout location is zero is in vec2 UV. We get the UVs from the vertex shader. So we open shader.vert over here. And now we have to change the vec2s to vec4s. And we have to add some 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0 stuff here. These are the UVs that we have to specify now. And I like to change those to better help with what we are trying to achieve. So that this one will be 
bottom left. That's like the first pixel that we have in our triangle, right? It's bottom left here. Then we have top left. We are no longer going into the middle, but we are going straight up now, right? Then we have top right. We go from top left to top right. This will create the first triangle this way, right? Something like that. And you will see what I mean in a second. <laughs> then we duplicate this, the top right. We will not be using what is called an index buffer for now. I want to explain this properly and therefore we will see why this, what I'm doing right here is not as efficient. We basically have to duplicate some vertices. We have to duplicate top right. Let me just duplicate those real quick so we can, it's easier. Then we go from top right over here, bottom right. And then the last one is a duplicate as well. Bottom left. Basically, we have two duplicates. And don't forget the colons. Otherwise, you get an error. And obviously, we have no longer three, but we have six. I can spell that. Okay. Bottom left is okay, but top left is not. Top left is basically minus 05 and minus 05. You can look at this to orient yourself. I will put this in the description as well. That is what we are working with. We basically went from here to here. Minus 05, minus 05. Now we need to go over here to the right. It's like the top right, right? That is 0 0.5 and minus 0.5. Don't worry about the UVs. We'll change them in a second. Then we duplicate that over here. And we can also duplicate bottom left. Minus 05 and 05. The only thing left is bottom right. And we didn't have 05, 05. And therefore, it's the last one. So UVs. Bottom left is O, O and 1 O. Let's keep some space here. Top left is basically the top left sample point. That one, that is O, O, right? O, O, 1, 1 down here. So O, O is fine. Just add a small space in here. Top right is basically X1, Y0. Remove that over here and put a space. Then top right again, basically duplicate what you just typed. Boom. Bottom right, basically one, one. And put a space in here too, like so. And then we duplicate the first one again, which is 00 and 10. If I did everything correctly, this should work. But we also have to write the UVs. But currently we only write the position. And we now have to change the vertices to use only X and why in the VEC4 we now specify the layout location zero out you VEC4 VEC2 I'm sorry UV and then we also have to write that in here UV is vertices on GL underscore vertex index like so dot ZW like the third and fourth component is Z and then W we use those two if everything is fine, and I don't know why 0.5 is in here, I could actually specify 1.0. Not sure why that is 0.5. Anyways, okay. So we go over here into the shaders, do right click and reveal in File Explorer. We have those here. Open the command prompt again. Type in glslcexe. We can take the shader.frag first, it's fine. Minus O for output, shader.frag.spv. That worked great. And then we do the same thing with vertex shader. So replace vert with uh, frag with vert. And that works too. Nice. Now back in the renderer, we did a lot of work in the shaders. And I guess we have to specify the image as a pointer when creating the image. VK check real quick. So yeah, basically we sample the texture. That's like the detour for sampling the texture. Okay, so it's IntelliSense being slow again. It's like always when I record, the IntelliSense is always slow. I'm sorry, guys. There's one more thing that we have to specify, which is something that you might not think about. It is a called the initial layout of the image, which is VK image layout undefined. Basically, that means we don't know what layout the image is in. And oftentimes that is the layout that we have to specify when we want to copy data to the image. And I will comment this out. Vulkan will actually tell us uh, when we have to specify that. So I, I, will keep it, I will keep it uncommented. Just wanted to add that real quick. And then we create the image. We could make a quick breakpoint here. Compile and try to run. 
I guess we can check if we actually get the data, but I'm pretty sure that we will. Uh, we inspect the header. You see the height, width is in here, size. So yeah, we are, we are interested in those two and the rest will come in a second. We go over here. We try to create the image. Let's see if there's anything wrong. Yes, there is something wrong. We already get our first validation errors for the pipeline. We created the pipeline now using these new shaders and we specified a sampler in the shader, but we are not specifying this sampler anywhere in our program we'll get to that and that's called a descriptor set layout we have to specify that now since we changed the layout of our shaders okay i tracked down the error i didn't supply what type of texture we have always forget that info dot image info dot image type it is which would be vk image type 2d okay compile and run again quickly just to check Boom, 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 boom. Okay, nothing. Only the pipeline layout complaining. That's good. So we successfully created the image. But we don't have any memory. We, In order to get memory for the image, we need to do what is called VK allocate memory. And that takes in a VK context device. Alloc info as a pointer, of course. Allocator and a pointer to device memory. VK context. I call this image memory i guess we could create vk types dot h right now so we have it already ragma wants that in the beginning so we create a new file vk types right if you didn't notice and then let's create a struct image and that basically is a vk image image and vk device memory memory and i guess we need to include vulcan in here vulcan dot h like so and then it works back in the renderer we can include the and i like to always have the includes of vulcan separate from the other includes so include whatever the fuck like so i guess we go into the vulcan context now and instead of having a vk image we have an image and call that image that's better that's like our first type that we specified and then there's no longer vulcan context image but vulcan context image dot image which would point to the vk image and then there's a vk context image dot memory i think that is easier to read okay so we need to allocate uh, memory and therefore we have to specify a vk memory alloc info vk memory uh, memory allocate info alloc info initialize that to zero and i'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen alloc info dot s type vk truck type allocate memory allocate info thank you alloc info dot we need an allocation size and this is where we have to do some calculation of the image size we basically have since we have one mip level it's easy to calculate it's data header dot width times data header dot height and then times the size for every pixel and the size for every pixel is 8 bits in R, 8 bits in G, 8 bits in B, and 8 bits in A. So 32, that is 4 bytes. And we have to specify the size in bytes. So times 4. Alloc info dot. What else do we need? If IntelliSense decides. We need what is called a memory type index. And that is something that took a while for me to understand as well. Basically, our GPUs have memory types in them. And an index into a different memory type is needed here. So basically, our GPU has different, can have different types at different indices. For example, and I will put this link in the description, the GPU in this article has at memory type 7, index 7, a device local bit, and at 9 and 10, some other bits set for memory types. What are memory types? Memory types are basically device local means it is GPU only memory, Host visible means that the CPU can write to this memory and the GPU can use this directly, meaning we could mem copy into this memory, this host visible memory, and the same way for GPU, we can copy data to this host cached memory and the CPU can access that. We There's also more stuff, but that's like the general idea. And for images, we want to use prefer to use device local memory if that is available and we assume that this is available if anyone has problems with this 
hit me up down in the comments and we will find a solution because it could actually be that there's no device local memory for you so yeah we are going to look for device local bits so how do we find this memory type index we actually have to do something before we can find that and that is what is called we have to call vk get image memory requirements basically we ask vulcan well what are the requirements for this image what are the memory requirements we pass in vk context device we pass in the image vk context image image and a pointer to mem requirements like so that is called vk memory requirements mem requirements like so and we don't have to initialize that because that is done for us using this function we also now we have the memory requirements for this image we now have to ask our gpu well what type of memory do you have available for us so we call vk get physical device memory properties that takes in a gpu so vk context gpu and the physical device memory properties I guess we call this GPU mem props. Pointer to that as well. And we specify that above here. VK physical device memory properties. That one down here. Down here. GPU mem props. Don't have to initialize that as well. So we now have the memory requirements and the memory re properties from the GPU. And then we have to loop through those. And if this IntelliSense decides today to finally work we could actually get some intelligence going, please, today. Thank you. So basically what we have to do is we get an array of memory types back and we have to loop over those, check if we have the correct memory type in the index. If so, we use that. So back in here, what we have to do is we have to create a for loop un 32 i is zero, i is less than gpu mem props dot memory type count i plus plus. In this for loop, we have to do an if check. And this if check is very complicated. But I'll show you what that actually means. We have to go go to the mem requirements. Memory requirements dot memory type bits. Those are the memory types that we are interested in. And memory types bit is a bit mask. A binary bit mask that for every bit that is set, we have to look at the corresponding index in the array. So what, does, what that means is basically we add these bits with one bit shifted up by i. And if a bit is set in the memory type bits, we have to look at this memory type. I don't know why it is like that. Uh, but that basically means, well, if this bit is set, please look at the memory type. There might be something there that you are interested in. And once we have the correct memory type that we want to look at, it might not be the perfect fit, but it is an... Uh, first step that is a requirement required we then have to check well okay the gpu the gpu mem props dot memory types on i dot property flags right these are the property flags that we have to look at now what do we want we want a vk memory property device local bit that's what we want if the bit for this memory property is set then we have a candidate here and basically these are the bits like they're all more or less exclusive apart from this one so what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we only have this memory property so only doing an and check doesn't work because it returns us the bits that are set that are equal to each other but it, it might leave out some bits from this memory property that we are interested in and therefore, we also have to make sure that it's actually equal to the VK memory property device local bit. And I'm pretty sure you have to brace those correctly. I wonder if I did. Might be. Might already be braced correctly. Yeah. Intelligence is slow again. And then we save those. And I guess we have to move the alloc info now above the for loop. And then we do alloc info memory type index. Well, that is I. Then we found the correct memory type index. And VK allocate memory returns a VK result. So we have to VK check that. That is a good breakpoint to test if our program works. 
I will compile and put a breakpoint here and let that run. Basically, we got down here. We can inspect the memory type index 7. I know that this is correct. But what I wanted to show you, I guess this is still memory requirements in binary. So basically, these are the memory requirements that we calculated, uh, that we queried for. What it gave us back is this bit mask that indicates that, well, the index 1 and the index 7 of our GPU memory properties over here might be of interest to us. These are basically the memory types. It's an array and it has property flags and a heap index. We are interested in the property flags. So index one property flags has nothing and index seven has one set. If we quickly look at device local bit, that is actually one and that is the correct one that we got back. So yeah, allocate memory should not fail now. Looking down here, all looks good. We only get the validation error for this shader. And so we allocated the memory properly. Good. There's one more thing that we have to do and that I always forget. It is called VK bind image memory. I don't exactly know what this does, but we have to do it. Otherwise, Vulkan will complain. VK context device. We do VK context image dot image. VK context image dot memory. And the reason why I batch those together is because you always have those together unless you have some sort of allocator and the memory offset is zero this call also has a vk result and so we check that too okay so we now have an image allocated properly but we don't have the image data the texture data in the image and we can only get the data to the image we cannot mem copy directly into the image uh, we have to create what is called a staging buffer that staging buffer will serve as a middleware if you want so that we copy the data to the staging buffer and then copy from there to the GPU. That's how you have to do it. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. You can also support me on Patreon. I've set up a new page. Supporting means getting access to the game code that I'm currently working on, which is Cakes Tower Defense.